hello viewers last session we have talked about uh, how occupational health and safety management system is developed based on pdca principles plan deployment check and review principles ss principles that safety management system is developed based on the standard of oshas 2007 oshas 2007 is the standard for the standard for the occupational safety and health management system now today we'll go with a case study which will make you more clear about this as as we have as we have talked last class also the safety and health philosophy in our organization we have processes we have raw material coming we have finished products going and we have people working we have various machines people coming inside people going out there is a community outside the organization lot of people are staying so schools community many people we have to take care of the whole of these things in the safety occupational health and safety management system it is not that you will take care of only your own people the whole society has to be taken care you your organization should not damage the society so occupational health and safety management system has to take care of all these things the oshas 2018 2001 will help you in developing the specification and in the last class we have developed the specific occupational health safety management system now we are going to the case studies this case study is from a world world class integrated steel plant having Uh, having not less than 10 million ton production having around 25000 people working so from this case study you will get everything how it is implemented let's understand one concept here the The, in the whole organization in the whole world there are four types of students student a you have four types of students student a student b student c and student d what is student a they are those people who put the efforts and they get the result they put the efforts in the safety management system they put the efforts in improving productivity they put the efforts in getting into iits they put lot of efforts and finally they get into that is called student a student b they don't put the efforts by fluke they get the results in the safety also some people do not do anything but organization continues with good results student don't read but in the objective question somehow they get into they pass that is called student b student c put the efforts organization put the efforts but immediately they don't get the results they keep putting the efforts and student d is people don't put the efforts don't get the results your organization any organization should consist of people of student a and student c 
they put the efforts, if they put the efforts, results will come. That we should, in the occupational health and safety management system, should develop people of student A and student B. I, I said this organization is a world class uh, safety organization. What do you mean by world class? World class is, see there are five types of maturities in the organization. One is beginners, they are called natural instincts. That means, if, if the statutory some people come and say you have to do it, they do it, otherwise they do not do it. If somebody tell you have to do it, they will do it, otherwise they will not do it. So, they will respond to the instructions, they will respond when it is required, which somebody says that is called beginners of the, in the scale of scale of one, 1 to 4 world class safety, they are at 1. And some, some organizations, some people, they require guidance, if you give guidance, they will do it, if you help them, they will do it. If the organization gets some, if the supervisors help, the workers will do. If the officers help supervisors, then supervisors will do. They look for the guidance that is called in the scale, they are called, they improve, they are called, they are called two. The three scale three is they do, they know everything they do everything. They know how to run the machines, they know how to run the processes, they have got all the skills, they have got all the competencies, they take care of themselves. So, it is also good, everybody takes care of themselves, it is a good organization. No? So, they are, they are called uh, at, at 3. Now, what is world class? World class is, I take care of myself, I take care of others also. If somebody is doing wrong, I will go and correct them, I will help them. I will not say that no, 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 he is not belonging to us, we will not do it. That is leading organizations, that is called world class organization. People have to look for world class organizations. The organization which we are, we are talking, they have got PDCA deployed in their organization. In the planning, they have health and uh, safety policies and management system frameworks. How do you do governance? They have written everything in the planning they do. And do, do is the implementation. How do you do it? How do you, how do you implement it? They have got the standards, they have got the codes, they have got the operating procedures, they have got uh, HS, HS tools. All these things come under do. And the check check means reviews. They have got the system of reviewing at various levels, various things and finally, they act. In the reviews, whatever gaps you get, they implement it. That is, that is the whole management system is divided into the, like this, this matrix on PDCA principles. How is it happening? In this organization, they have got the strong principle, fundamental principles like improving the quality of life of all the communities we serve, not only our people, all the communities. That is one of the fundamental principles they have. They have got value systems, values like integrity, excellence, whatever they do, they have to excel. Whatever they do, it should have integrity, unity, responsibility. Responsibility means whatever job people are doing, they have to take the ownership, they have to take the responsibility, they have to take the accountability. And pioneering, they have to help the whole world, they are the pioneers. This is called the principle, this is called
this is called the principles based on these principles the whole organization is built it is driven by effort time and money of the people of the leaders leaders have to put the money leaders have to allow time to do leaders have to put the effort so by the leaders effort time and money that will drive the whole organization involving people they have to involve all the people at all the levels and it is driven by the following methodology like leadership and accountability competent people they should have competent people there there is a system of addressing this hazard identification compliance assurance health and safety planning risk management like that and they have also got safety analytics the present trend is you should capture the data the data you should put into analytics so that you will get predictions you will get prescriptions finally all these things are to be implemented from design stage that is called prevention through design so there this all 17 17 methodology principles take care of all the oshhs uh, standard requirements in addition to that many more things they will take that's what i told you occupational health safety management system of world class companies address many many more things that is how it is addressed also it is addressed two fold one is the behavioral safety model that means the i, I talked about behavioral safety last time so they have, they have use behavioral safety to improve the behaviors of the people and they have engineering safety process safety process safety is it's not everybody's uh, everybody's uh, contribution the qualified engineers and knowledgeable engineers they understand they look at the hazards risks of the process by deep engineering knowledge and provide interventions that is not done by everybody so this process safety in, when when you are applying process safety you require at least 20% of the uh, behavioral safety also so behavioral also should cooperate if you are applying behavioral safety 80% is behavioral safety 20% is the process safety the combination of these two is used in this organization to make this occupational health safety management system successful and and they have they have policy making committees at at in the organization somebody has to take the policies they have to make the policies that is the leadership teams and they have got the implementation teams if the policies are made they have to be implemented in the organization they have got the implementation then they have got a supporting supporting like safety safety people and outside consultants they should helping and finally they will review it at different levels so that the the pdca finally we have to make improvement review we will take to improvement so this is the safety function deployment in that organization so this uh, the guiding methodology guiding principles i said this 17 17 each 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 uh, uh, principle has got has got eight divisions in it 14 7 like that each principle is subdivided how it is implemented so we'll go with some example then you will understand like leadership and accountability so 
So, what is that leadership and accountability? What what are the various sub principles in that? How do leaders model positive health and safety behaviors? Leaders have to leaders have to see positive health and safety behaviors is coming in the whole organization. How leaders are engaged two way communication. How health and safety goals and objectives are established. People have to establish leadership with the help of all the people. They have to establish goals, objectives, safety goals and objectives. So, and how leaders ensure health and safety management system throughout the organization is deployed. That is to be done at the leadership level. Okay. And how do you check whether it is there or not? We will we'll, we'll come in the next slide, we will we'll talk about those things. Because risk, risk management is very, very important principle. Let us go more little more detail in the risk management. First, first point in the risk management is the systematic reviews undertaken to ensure risk control systems are to manage risk from hazards. See, what is the principle? We have hazards, we have risk, we have risk control systems. So, business should have structured and schematic approach of managing risk and hazard of all the activities. They have to implement at each and every stage. If, if they are implemented, you can see, see OSHA's 18001 has given a provision how to verify it. So, these are the things which we which will be verifying whether this is this is done or not we will be verifying like this. So, organization you see is the is the approach to the risk management document documented that is one of the verification. So, these are things to be implemented these are the things could be verified. Occupational health safety management system which you are implementing it should be verifiable. It should be implemented in such a way anybody wants to verify it, it should be verified. There should be written procedure in place to set the ongoing risk assessment for the risk control to reduce. See, there should be written procedures. It is not that if you want to tell people verbally tell so, verbally people will forget. So, here everything you should have written procedures in place up to date. Whatever you are doing, there should be a written procedure for the risk assessment and the risk control and people, people it should be documented so that everybody will follow it. Risk assessment, risk assessment sufficient in relation to the nature of the scope of the identified hazards. Is the risk assessment what people are doing? Is it sufficient to the nature of the hazard? If the nature of the hazard is very high, the risk assessment will be very thorough. So, there are lots of different risk assessment techniques which, 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 which people will follow. So, the RA processes which are there are being done to take care of the all high hazard, hazardous processes, they have, to, they have put everything in place. Are assessments undertaken? So, ensure that people carrying the risk assessment are competent. Risk assessment, if there is no competency, so they cannot, they, they, they will do only superficial. So, this organization has put very competent people to very trained people in the risk assessment risk assessment process. The sites site has recognized some some cases specialist techniques require specialist skills and knowledge. In some places you require special techniques to look at the risk assessment. Normal techniques will not be there. They have also identified those special techniques what are required for that particular assess. Suppose, if the, if the hazard assessment requires thorough uh, chemical knowledge, thorough or if, if it requires hazard studies or if it requires many, uh, many other things, those things they have identified where they have to apply all those things.
So, risk, risk evaluation, when, you, when they have evaluated the risk and they have put, they have to put the interventions in place. Once you understand the risk, you have to put the controls, P controls they have to follow hierarchy like this. If the risk is very high, they have to, they have to eliminate it or substitute it or put the engineering controls. They have to use this, this hierarchy to reduce the high hazards. So, all the hazards, all the risks to be made LRP level. To bring it to LRP level, so they have to use eliminate substitute engineering controls. So, all, for, throughout the organizations, this, has, this evaluation is done and they have put the interventions like this. Deployment of the risk assessment process, involvement of all the people, written document systems. So, they, they are to be deployed each and every, every, every site, every process, every place. And it should be communicated to all the people. Every, every, every organ in the whole organization, they have communicated through various means, all the risk assessments and the outcomes. Unless people are communicated, people are trained on those things, the re results will not come. That, that, that they have done across the whole organization. follow up systems so how how the follow up systems are done in this how the follow up systems for the whole risk assessment and implementations are done it is it is they have deployed across the whole organization the human factors ergonomics at the at the high high hazard facilities The ergonomics human factors are to be properly deployed. So, the is the human factors analysis done, how the human is working, what are the posters, what are the positions, how much time they are doing, all those things it is to be done. And finally, the results should be used to deploy the plans and strategies. Whatever, whatever results are coming, again they should deploy in the plans, they should take it to deployment process. So, learning from lessons. So, if any, if any, if any, any failures are happening, from there they should learn, all the organization is learning and they are deploying the good practices everywhere and they are, they are encouraging the people who are deploying all. They have named whole implementation process, they have put different under different managements they have named. They have, they have named as hazard management, skill and development management, contractor safety management, occupational health management, incident management, process safety management, special support systems management, post incident management. Post incident management means if any incident happens, how you manage it? You will be surprised to know in this organization when, when an incident happens, a fire happens say, the fire brigade, fire brigade vehicles, they have to go within 2 to 3 minutes to that place. They have to run at very fast, there is no speed limit. If the fire, fire vehicles move at slow speed, it is it is that means they have not followed it. 
fire vehicles they have to follow they have to go at very high speed because of the speed limit in the plant fire vehicle should not be gone that we should not we should not do and ergonomics and safety management systems so now because of the because of the more service sector service sector jobs physical jobs are coming down in the organization and the mental jobs are increasing to take care of those mental jobs people use the job stress model so job stress model when 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 the challenges are when challenges increasing performance will also increase up to certain level afterwards if the challenges increase the performance will will come down this is called job stress so we should we should if the challenges are more to the people to the workers to the to the supervisors then we have to improve their competencies if you don't improve their competencies then they will go into the job stress their performance will drastically come down so ergonomics and job stress management is very important in the present scenarios okay people when when we when we when we have people people at different levels we have frontline managers managers leadership so what are the competencies they require like frontline managers they require high skills some will and some knowledge for the managers they require more knowledge for the leadership they require more will they require very less skill so this model they have applied in the whole of the organization to implement the to develop the competencies so frontline managers are given more training on the skills where leadership is given more training in the will managers are on the knowledge so this is called kws model of dupont this organization has implemented by doing this their their ltifr which is there at this level at high level slowly by implementing one by one the the ltifr has come to very low level is lot of improvements so when you when you implement slowly the whole occupational health safety management systems it will it will take maturity and afterwards it will come to a level very 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 low level this organization has achieved this this it is seen it is seen as as uh, he has told by dupont the good safety is the good business it is observed observed in this organization the divisions the places where they are doing uh, good safety their incidents are reducing and their business results are going up so in the division to division when we when people compare where the safety is at very very levels their effectiveness and business results are also good this is what seen in this organization fundamentally they have followed in the implementation two principle one is seeing the light the people should see the light the competencies are built up in the people the standards are taught to the people the risk analysis results are taught to the people people are people people are sh shown the light if you do all these things you you will be safe you will not have injuries your equipment will not get damaged we, by showing this light 80% of the people they set right themselves they agree they follow everything but there are few people which who will not follow in this in this world it happens some people do not follow say 10 to 20% of the people they should be given consequence show heat that means consequence management so this organization has got first more emphasis on showing the light but some emphasis also put to show the heat so that the whole organization everybody will be on the same same platform
then they have seen the results. So, that organization, they have got lot of tribals coming in to, into the organization to work in the, in, the, in the houses. Those tribal ladies look like this. They, they, tribal, tribal people, they have their own way of living. They live like this. But when they come to the organization, they become like this. So, the behavioral changes have come so much in the people, the, pe the whole people, the tribal people who are like that, they, they, they give value the whole of the re system requirements. See, they will become like this. They will cooperate, they will become like this. Working at height is one of the biggest, biggest hazard in the organizations. See, people are working, people are working at different levels, different levels. You see, they have put the lifelines. They have put the lanyards, they have put the lanyards, they have put the lanyards, lifelines, so that nobody will injure. That is how the, the right implementation, if you do, the results will be like this. The, when they do construction site, the improvements will be like this. There will be barrications, even the tracks, railway tracks. People, there are a lot of manual people, working contractor people, they should not jump and go. That is why they have barricaded. So, nobody can go to. In Indian railways, you see many, many incidents, people crossing the tracks and getting injured or died. That will not happen in this organization because they have put the barrications across the whole tracks. See how they, they do not carry anything on the head, everything has to be color, taken through wheelbarrows. People use the dress dresses so that they will not use the loose dresses. You see the, the welding equipment, you see how, how they have put the welding equipment, cylinders are in the right, right, right direction, always upright direction. You will be amazed in this organization when people go up and down, they use the staircases, hold the rails. Holding rail is, is one of the important rule for this organization. So, so that they will not slip. Whenever you go up and down, it is the fun, first, first rule to hold the rail. So that even if you slip, your hand is holding the rail. If you do all these things, look at these birds. The sun is setting, birds are going happily to the organization. This organization believes and had ensured that all the people will go home safely. So, occupational health, safety, health system finally should make people to go home safely equipments to work safely, processes to work safely. That is, that is the purpose of the occupational health and safety management system. If you implement occupational health and safety management system rightly, it will drive production, it will drive quality, it will ultimately drive the quality of the people. Thank you.